Hello everybody, I'm Don Counts and welcome into Fayetteville Public Utilities Channel 6. Today we have the voice of the Tennessee Titans in the house, Mike Keith. Mike, nice Hi. to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to, good to be seen. Good to be back in Lincoln <laughs> County. I uh, appreciate uh, you coming here. Uh, let's tell everybody about who is Mike Keith, where are you from and what got you into radio? Well, originally from Knoxville but grew up in Franklin and mm -hmm. uh, have spent about half my life in East Tennessee and about half my life in Middle Tennessee and mm -hmm. over the last 13 years now. I've spent a lot of time in West Tennessee too, mm -hmm. traveling all over the place in mm -hmm. Northern Alabama and Western Kentucky. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun in this job, kind of getting to go all over and see folks and talk about uh, what good is going on with the Tennessee Titans. So it's, uh, it's been a, a real dream come true to have a chance to come back and, and live and work in, in this part of the country, mm -hmm. but also to do it for an NFL team, which I never thought <laughs> would have. I, I mean, I, I never thought we'd have an NFL team in Nashville. Going to UT, I'm sure you, uh, we all grew up listening to John Ward and you think, oh man, that's the job. But you wound up getting <laughs> the job even better than that. Well, the Tennessee job's obviously a great job. Yeah. And uh, whoever gets to be voice of the Vols, it's a tremendous honor mm -hmm. to follow Lindsey Nelson sure. and to follow John Ward and to kind of, uh, you know, really follow in their footsteps. I worked with John for 11 years and that was a that was a great learning experience. It was a great tutorial to figure out how you do things mm -hmm. the right way in terms of preparation. I learned very quickly that I could never be John Board and that um, I shouldn't try. <laughs> and that the, the best thing that I could do was to follow, you know, the different things he did in terms of his preparation mm -hmm. and the professionalism with which he did the job. But then I I had to be me. Mm -hmm. The same way Bob Kessling has to be him mm -hmm. and anybody who's doing announcing anywhere, you have to do your own thing. But mm -hmm. the, the lessons that you can learn from such a professional was, was really, I, I don't even know how you, how you sort of put it in perspective, what a big deal that was. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't have paid the amount of money that that education is worth. I can imagine. Because he was, he was really something else. He's still doing great. You know, oh, he, yeah. And if you see him, he hasn't changed a lick. <laughs> he could he could still be doing it. But I tell you, Don, I think I think John got to the point that he said, you know, I want to go out while I'm still really really good at this. Mm -hmm. A lot of older announcers slip. Sure. He had not slipped, and no. he he went out on top, which mm -hmm. I really respect him for. I hope I can do that. Yeah. I hope I can go out, you know, doing my best work like he did. You know, he, uh, John Ward is still the voice of uh, natural gas. Natural we, we, gas. <laughs> natural. Nat Electric yeah. gas. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are. Uh, I know of all, trust yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he was a, uh, John Ward, I uh, didn't mean to get off on him, but he was, he was a salesperson. He was out selling. Right. Uh, do you have to do the same thing? He's never, he never worked a day in the broadcast business. And that's what a lot of people don't know about him, mm -hmm. is he, he never pulled a, an air shift as a disc jockey. <laughs> right. He never did a sports call-in show. He never read the morning sports or the morning <laughs> news. He was a salesman and mm -hmm. he did play-by-play -play mm -hmm. as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And he actually started that while he was in college. He would take a tape recorder to the intramural games for his fraternity and he would he would tape it and then he would bring it back to the fraternity house and all of his buddies would critique it. But mm -hmm. he knew that sales was a big part of it and sales was really a, a part of how I got started. I have worked in the business for 27 years in mm -hmm. some way, shape or form, mm -hmm. but sales has also been a part of my job and I'm still involved sure. in our sales effort. And, and, and a lot of that came from him saying up front, you know, this is a part of the business you need to understand. And it's been incredibly valuable to me mm -hmm. to be involved in all of that, not totally following his lead, sure. but to a certain extent. But that's where he made his living. A lot of people don't know that. Did you work with Bob Kessling too? Oh, very close with Bob Kessling. Bob gave me a shot at WBIR and has certainly been there to give me advice and to, to give me a tremendous amount of help. I've always looked at Bob kind of like a big brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas, whereas John's kind of a dad, yeah. uh, Bob's kind of a big brother, and he's been uh, exceedingly good to me through the years. And good. I think you know the job he's done at Tennessee, following John, which was so oh, hard. Oh, Golly, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what a challenge! Sure, and 
I think it says a lot about the character of Bob Kessling that mm -hmm. he could follow John. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you're gonna hear it, you know, mm -hmm. you're uh, sure. John Ward, John Ward, John sure. Ward, and Bob has done exceedingly well with that. Sure. You know, when we when we think about radio and that radio backgrounds where I came from, you know, you're actually talking to someone who can't see, who, who, who does not know what's going on. So you have to uh, describe it so well and so And that's very tough. It's a lot tougher than you think because you think, okay, people are watching television or people at the game who's listening. The bottom line is 90% of the people, you know, don't have a clue what's going on. So you've got to describe it so vividly. And you do that so well. Thank but you. that is a, that's, that's, that's a, 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 a tough thing to do. It is hard. And it, it especially in today's world for my generation of announcers because we've been raised on television. I mean, sure. think about John Ward, who I guess is nearly 80 now. Mm -hmm. and, and he came up in an era when radio, to start with, was more dominant than television. And so the art of being a radio announcer was very prevalent. And my generation has been totally surrounded by television. Mm -hmm. I think my generation of announcers assumes too much. We assume you can see it. That's right. We, we assume that you know what's going on. We, we assume that you get the feeling of being there. Or you, you assume you know the skull right. or what down right. it is. And, and uh, from a radio perspective, it's like, if I'm at home or at the pool or at the beach, if I'm listening, I got to know all of that. Well, a majority of our listeners are watching the game on television. We know that. Okay. And that's okay. But we don't present a broadcast necessarily towards that. We present a broadcast for the guy who's driving his kids to choir practice. That's right. Or the guy who's on the lawnmower, like I, like I would be. <laughs> We've uh, all done that. Yeah, on, on the lake, Both whatever. Of us, yeah, all that. And so we, I think my training with John helps me to kind of stay in that mode. Mm -hmm. If you're watching it on TV, maybe you kind of feel like we overdo it a little. And for that, I apologize. Sure. But I hope people will understand we are still committed to doing a radio broadcast, not to be, you know, mm -hmm. the, the TV broadcasters. Sure. The TV broadcasters do a great job. But oh. we're appreciative that people turn on the TV and turn down the sound and listen to us. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly cognizant of that, but I, I think you still have to make sure that you're not assuming that everybody can see and feel right. and kind of and kind of get a you know a whole sense for what's going on with that. You know, when you're looking at broadcast around the, the nation, uh, whether it be TV and, and radio, usually, in, like in your case, you got Frank Wycheck with you, and and that gives you a perspective uh, that because he's been there. Yeah. But it takes the broadcaster to keep things on online because Frank Wachek, as good as he is, he knows and he's, he may be good. I don't know him, but I'm just saying. So he I, is good. It's very important that you uh, have the broadcaster there as well. And I, I well, to that. use a basketball analogy, I think you're playing point guard. Sure. And uh, you get to shoot every once in a while, mm -hmm. but what you're trying to do is you're trying to set everybody up. I'm trying to set up Frank Wycheck, Cody sure. Allison on the sidelines, Larry Stone doing scores. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it moving and, and give you the basic information. And what was so great for me in starting this job was my color announcer to begin with was Pat Ryan. Pat's crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is so much fun. And in the early stages of the job, I mean, I got, I got the chance to do this when I was just 32 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, all I had to do was just call the game because I knew Pat was going to be entertaining. <laughs> and it, it really helped me so much because I just filled my role and did what I did and didn't try to do too much. Mm -hmm. And Pat took care of the humor and the controversy and sure. the, the analysis. Sure. And then, then when Frank came in, I was able to help him more, I think, because I was a little further along. I was 38 and mm -hmm. had been doing it for six years. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was a big credit to Pat that we were able to kind of get started the way that we did, and, and he was such a great help to me. And I think in the end, it turns out he was a great help to Frank because he enabled me to kind of develop and, and know what I would need mm -hmm. to do to do a better job for that. But the philosophy, I don't think, changes. I don't think you're interested in what I think of a play call. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't play. I played high school, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, sure. I didn't. I'm not a coach. Sure. Don't claim to be a coach. Mm -hmm. 
And so what I want to do is tell you what play we ran, mm -hmm. and then I want to ask Frank, why did that work or why did that not work <laughs> sure. or did you like it? Sure. Because he has the credibility to be able to say that. I mm -hmm. don't. Let's talk about, uh, give me a description of where you're sitting and how well you see the game. Because, I mean, Patrick and I have both been to games, and, and, you know, I see pretty well, but you must have an awesome seat. It's pretty good. And people <laughs> always ask, what's your favorite stadium to broadcast? And I say LP Field, and they think, oh, you're just saying that because <laughs> you work for Mr. Adams and you have to. <laughs> sure. But the truth is, the only stadium in the league that is as low in the press box is Baltimore Stadium. Mm. We have the lowest press box point. I sit on the 40-yard line on the west side, on the river side, and I sit uh, towards the north end, more toward the north end zone, but it is a great view, and you kind of get spoiled. <laughs> uh, I did high school football for 10 years before I got a chance to do this, and mm -hmm. Lindsey Nelson always said, if you could do high school football and you could do minor league baseball, you can broadcast anything. <laughs> Because, as you know, when you're broadcasting a high school game, a lot of times you're hanging out of a press box. Oh, or yeah. You're on top of something. Oh, or, man. And you can't see half the field because the band's down in the corner. The <laughs> Been there. And, mm. and so it makes you appreciate so much when you have a great vantage point. And mm -hmm. we do at LP Field. I mean, it is phenomenal. So from that standpoint, and for the fact that, the other part of it, too, is I only have to keep up with 45 players on either side. Mm -hmm. Whereas Bob Kessling doing Tennessee or Eli Gold doing Alabama or, mm -hmm. I mean, any college announcer sure. is having to keep up with 75, 80 guys on oh, a side. I see. I don't. I've got to do 45 guys. So in, <laughs> in many ways, I've got a good view. I don't have that many players to keep up with. Truth is, Don, I have no excuse. <laughs> if I don't do a good job, it's all on me. Do you ever look at the tele uh, television monitor at all? A little bit. A little bit. Um, we, I, I have one in a good spot where I can check things out. Mm -hmm. And there are certain places, uh, when you go to Dallas, for example, the broadcast position is so bad, we're in the corner of the end zone. Oh, wow. And so because they have the what they call the Godzilla vision, <laughs> That screen that runs over the field from 20 to 20, there's part of the field that you cannot see. Wow. And so what you have to do is you literally have to, if a play goes toward that corner, mm -hmm. you have to watch it on oh. TV to, to wow. figure out where it is. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a challenge. But really, I leave the, the, the screen is always in a position in the booth where it's really set up for Frank because oh, yeah. we want Frank – Mm -hmm. to be able to see the replay. Sure. So uh, I do look at it, not sure, afraid to admit that I no, do, I know, but I know. it's easier to have him in a position where he can see that. One of the most interesting things as I listen to broadcast around, and, and it's a very difficult thing, is being able to, you want to hear some crowd noise, but right. you don't want to hear too much right. crowd noise. And uh, so I just wasn't sure, how do you, uh, I'm sure someone else handles that for you. Larry Stone. Uh, Larry Stone is the most amazing person with whom I've ever worked in broadcasting. He is, I've, I've never been with somebody who's good on the air. He's good producing the pregame show. He's good producing the broadcast. He's a great, he's a great scoreboard host. He sort of understands all the context of, of what we need to do. And then he's great at sort of directing everything, mm -hmm. too. And A very nice guy. Uh, he's not bad. He's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's very <laughs> Most nice. days, he's really good. <laughs> now, Larry and I have been friends for a long time, and mm -hmm. we've been together for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't imagine doing this without him because I think that for the two of us, I think we work really well together because – his strengths are my weaknesses, mm -hmm. and if he has any weaknesses, maybe my strengths sort of fit them, but I think we sort of, we sort of mesh well together. But from a technical standpoint, he's phenomenal. And that just making sure – and this is what I'm most proud of, Don. If you listen to the sound of Titans Radio, and I'm not talking about me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the overall sound of what mm -hmm. we do, how the music sounds, how the crowd sure. sounds, how the announcers sound – that's what I'm most proud of. Oh, yeah. Because I, I don't think you go anywhere and you will hear a broadcast that sounds as good as what we do. And that's totally a credit to Larry Stone. Well, that's very good. Larry did that. I mean, because I know Please it sounds Please don't tell good. him I said that. Okay. <laughs> I know it sounds good. I mean, I, but because I hear, I know what sounds bad. And I, I listen to it, and I, I know it's very well, good. Well, I think Larry was Larry is a guy who was in North Carolina, and he was with Woody Durham there, and mm -hmm. he worked with the Tar Heel Sports Network. And mm -hmm. 
What we have in common that, that I think is kind of special is we're sort of old school. Both of us were raised properly in the business mm -hmm. and we try to do things the right way. We try to do our interviews the right way and make sure the sound is proper. Mm -hmm. And you know, we understand fundamentally what it takes to be a good broadcast because we were taught that. Mm -hmm. We were taught that when we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. And when you learn from Bob Kessling and John Ward and Woody Durham mm -hmm. and Mick Mixon and sure. people of that ilk that we've both had a chance to be around, mm -hmm. I hope it, it reflects in that way because I know for him and for me, we both hope that those people are proud of what we do sure. because we try to live up to those standards. Let's talk about your radio stations down the line. How many do you have? We're all there, there over the state. 68 in 54 markets all over Tennessee, all over North Alabama, all mm. over Western Kentucky, mm. one in Arkansas. Wow. Um, it's one of the biggest radio networks in the league, and it really wow. reflects the fact that the Titans are very much a regional team. And having, you know, a, a a relationship with a radio station like YTM here. Sure. Uh, if you look at the stations we're on, we're very proud of not only the number of stations, but the quality of the radio stations and how involved they've been with us. Mm -hmm. I think they feel like they know us. Sure. And uh, I think they feel pretty good about what we give them on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope so, because sure. it's, uh, you know, growing up and being part of the Vol Radio Network, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of what we did is, is crafted after what Lindsey Nelson did nearly 60 years ago, putting that together. And we got in the car and went and saw people and said, hey, we want you to carry our ball games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back when we were the Tennessee Oilers, not everybody mm -hmm. wanted to do that. So uh, mm -hmm. getting them lined up has been a good thing. Well, it's worked very well. And, and I know you're appreciative of the, of the local radio stations. Let's, let's uh, go through some real quick stuff because I know we're going get, to get ahead to Rotary. Let's talk about uh, Jeff Fisher. As I, I told you before the show, he came to Riverside Christian Academy here. And uh, I know that's going to be a big change this year with him being gone. Well, just from a personal standpoint, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, uh, Coach Fisher and I worked together for a long time and a uh, close relationship. Sure. Uh, a person that I value very much. I learned a lot from him just as a man. Uh, good dad, mm -hmm. good football coach, mm -hmm. uh, good friend. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. You yeah. know, it's hard. But at the same time, at the moment that that happened, uh, I was very confused. Mm -hmm. and uh, like, like most of the, I know, the Titans. I know. Well, especially because famous. it had been announced he was coming back, and then mm -hmm. three weeks later he's, he's not. And I think Coach Fisher was tired. Sure. And, uh, you know, from what I understand in, in – talking to mutual friends, I, my understanding is he's doing very well. Yeah. And I haven't had a chance to visit with him. I had a shoulder surgery the Monday after he, mm -hmm. he uh, resigned, and so I did not have opportunity to, sure. to kind of get with him and visit after the fact, but I'm looking forward to doing that. Sure. At the same time, everybody in our building, when, when that happened, everybody in our building was in shock, mm -hmm. but the one guy that we were ready to rally around immediately was Mike Munchak. Mm -hmm. The thing that stands out about Coach Fisher and Coach Munchak is when they walk in a room, they're in charge. You know it. No doubt. No doubt. And that, that to me, is where you start with coaching, mm -hmm. is that person who has everybody's <laughs> attention. Uh, Coach Munchak has it. He's doing a great Good. job. I like his staff. I think he has done what he needed to do, and that's make changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about broadcasters can't be like other broadcasters. Well, coaches can't be like other coaches. Sure. Uh, Coach Munchak can't try to be Coach Fisher. He's got to be Mike Munchak, and that's mm -hmm. what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So it's while the transition in some ways has been painful, it's also kind of exciting, this new era, and it's exciting because Mike Munchak has done a good job of making everybody feel excited. Sure. Very, very good. All right, listen, one more thing. Let's talk about uh, what do you think about the quarterback position. I'm excited about Jake Locker. Is that who it's going to be? Uh, well, I don't know if he'll be the starter. We're, we're going to have to wait and see – sort of how this court case plays out to see what sort of off season we're going to have. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt the Titans are going to bring in a veteran. I think the amount of time that we have as far as an off season will probably determine which veteran that is. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my belief is that uh, a veteran will probably get the nod to start for us. But our future is Jake Locker. I've had a chance to interview him twice already. Mm -hmm. I like him very much. Mm -hmm. I'm just very, very excited about what he's going to bring to us. 
not only as a football player, but as a human being. He's a great young man. Good. And I think people are going to be excited to get to know him. That's good for Tennessee. Okay, well, we're going to wrap up. Uh, you still going to do Titans All Access this year? I hope so. All right. <laughs> if they'll let me, yeah. <laughs> okay. Titans All Access is on in nine different markets. That's our magazine show that will, we think, start in August. But mm -hmm. uh, we're waiting to see kind of how everything plays out with this, this lockout situation. But, sure. yes, it should be back. What about uh, are you going to have the – Mike Munchak show? The Mike Munchak. See, you nearly did it, didn't you? I almost did. You I, nearly did it. I almost they say, did. You nearly <laughs> said I did. I'm going to be, they told me I'm going to be fined $100 <laughs> every time I call it the Mike Fisher show or the, Je or the Jeff Munchak show. I almost uh, did it. When you've, when you've said it as long as I have, when you've said the Jeff Fisher show as long mm -hmm. as I have, mm -hmm. you, you kind of fear that you're going to do that. But, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the Mike Munchak radio show will be on Tuesday yeah. nights from six until seven. I always enjoy that. I know there's a lot. I would love to see one of those shows because I, I, I listen to it and I think, wow. I mean, because are you, um, let me say, are, are you at locations? Where? Oh, Charlie's in oh, Brentwood. Okay, mm -hmm. and so so I know you're like in a setting, I'm thinking it's pretty hard to get that kind of good quality sound. And, and you're also taking telephone calls. We right? are. That's pretty, that's, that's, that is a uh, pretty big uh, undertaking within itself. No question. Yeah. No question so about it. So you've got it. to it's have a, some good engineers down the It's a line. challenge. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I, I'm impressed and, and I'm so proud you came by. Thank I know you. you're in a hurry. Thank I you. I just wanted to say hello and uh, get a good opportunity because I know you're going to go to Rotary. I'm going to go with you and, and, and check you out. But I just thought that this would be a better opportunity for me to sit down and talk to you. And, and thank you for what you do. We, we, we all root for the Titans and we wish you luck and wish the Titans luck this year. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate y'all watching here on Federal Public Utilities Channel 6. We've had uh, Mike Keith, voice of the Falcon, uh, voice of the Falcons. Falcons is our play. Fal uh, voice I of the know. Titans. <laughs> uh, voice of the Titans here in uh, Fayetteville today and we appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you next time.